So what, what did you do of yourself when you got out of Acklington? Yeah, I came out of Acklington. I put on a number of different things. I opened a cigarette business. Me and my brother, you know, and uh, I thought they would have a little go the legal side of things, you know. So we're getting these cigarette machines that were about to a £1,000 a piece to buy if I bought some. I thought, wait, when the supply and demand was too much, I thought by the time we leave, we could have had about 100 bars to put them in. I thought, wait, it's going gonna, gonna to cost too much. So, out ones were coming to a handy, you know, stolen. Where are you getting that from? Oh, come on, oh, give it and go on, give it, give it. I didn't, I lost count at one stage. I didn't realise what so many machines. I've got 50 odd machines in the pubs. Yeah, half a stool in I suppose, you know. Did you put juicy free fags in it? Put everything in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, back in the day, you get in, did you still have like, did have a 10p or like a coin? Yeah, could I? You didn't know. Mm. People used to put the duty free tabs, and we did as well, obviously. And our lady said they put them for the club ones, and that people didn't have a difference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have a little fiddly, you know. But, but unfortunately, I've got, I've, got, I've got the jail for that. What, what was the charge for that? Handling, handling. Handling. They give us 15 months for, on the Wednesday. You know them days when they've done 15, anything over 12 months, you've done two thirds. Yeah. yeah. So on the Wednesday, I got 15 months. They took us back to court on the, on the, no, on the Wednesday, they took us back to court on the Friday and reduced it down to 12 months. Yeah. Now, I said to me part of the time, I says, listen, I says, we have went away. We've got so many months to serve. He said, I right, sir, so I'm sitting in the cell after we've had the sentence reduced. And the school come in, he says to me, Paul, he says, who we could accuse, he says, right, he says, you're out next week. My calculation's got us down to four months. So I'm sitting there, I wonder, oh, really? what's going on here? Yeah? No mention of me. So I thought, I'll just sit there. So this goes back and forth. He says, right, there, he's taking a reception. I thought, I want me a court day. I've got, I've got a rest of me. I've got bail the same day. I've got a charge this year. No, I'll carry on. It was the night before, and the school came in the sun, and he was filling the papers. He went, Stephen, you didn't look too happy for the man who was getting out in the morning. I said, God love me, mate. Couldn't <laughs> <laughs> believe you now. Let's just see the miss and we're miscalculating a few weeks out. So it was one 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 for us, I suppose, you know. Yeah. I got back, you know. Yeah. So so what um, what was that second prison? You were the same one? I um no, no, I wouldn't I stayed in Durham for that one. I Durham. In Durham, yes. What was Durham like? It was alright because we used to cook in the cells, you know. Yeah. What was your recipes? Well, what would happen is, my dad, we used to go to court at the time, and they would, he had to get permission to be remanded over seven days. But well, we refused that, because when we're going to court, we're getting a bit of, well, it's what I've been doing. We get myself a bit of house of smoke. He's dropped off the court, and my dad would go down to the uh, Moxies, and he'd get 50 pounds of Moxie Spencer's pre packed meats in each bag for me and my brother, and he'd come up with 100 pounds of Chinese. <laughs> so when the, the, the schools and the busy would lower it, have it in the cell, they were terrified of all. You know, that were happening in a cell and we'd take my pre packed meats and that, and they say, Yeah, we've got to take, and you even had a private visit with your missus, so uh, okay. why would we want to be reminded of what seven years for? Eating good. But uh, were I, but were I? And uh, well, look, like, say, I suppose you say a bit like saying the good fellas, but we're, we're cooking in the cells, you know? Yeah. I was lying in the cell and I, and he has, uh, I've been smoking, I think that's your day in them days. So he has Stephen, look at the door, what? <laughs> yeah, he said, Give us a what? I thought, that sounds like a bird. I says, it sounds like our lass. Looks at the window. I asked Stephen, and looked, and I could see how she was being the one she shouted, You've got Judge in chambers, I would. <laughs> I thought, but strange. I said, How did you know it was my cell? She says, Stephen, it was the only one with loads of Marks and Spencer's food outside the window. Keep it cool, you know. I said, Well, I'll answer that, you know. <laughs> Is that something you would expect? Your missus is shouting at you in the window. You're getting Judge in chambers. <laughs> You would have loved that, wouldn't you? Was, oh, yeah. Peter was, like, his hustle was uh, working in the kitchen and getting all the ingredients to cook uh, burritos and mm -hmm. tamales. and I'd cook all the Mexican food and bring it back to the wing and sell it for, like, packs of tuna and stuff like that. Well, of course, that's what you've got to do. You've got to hustle. Yeah, you've got to hustle. hustle in them places, you know? Yeah. That's what you, you do, what you do on the streets, but you just do it a different way in, yeah. a different way in the prison, you know? I'd make gloves and beanies. You know, like, your old sweatshirts you'd have were, like, ripped up and that. I'd get them off all the people. And I'd, I'd cut a hand out of him like that, sew them together, make a pair of gloves and that. Uh -huh. Make a beanies, so you can put them all down. I had, I had a screw sweep where you used to give him like loads of tips, you know? Yeah. And um, some of some were good and some were bad, you know? But he used to always look after her. Get a bit of snow done, you know? Oh, aye. It makes it, it makes it easier. Do you have any other hustles that you've developed in prison? Uh, just survival, basically, you know? And that's what it's about, you know? Survival, keep yourself right. Keep your nose clean. Somebody fucks with it, do nothing again. They're not doing it a second time, you know. 
train hard. Yeah. Train hard, eat well. That's all you can really do, you know. So in America, as soon as you go in, they ask you for your paperwork and shit Don't like bend that. down for the soap. <laughs> 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 and it's, it's, it's all racial gangs in, in Arizona and they ask you for your paperwork when you walk in so when he got sentenced he'd had a long day and they come and asked him for his paperwork and he said I just want to have a, a nap first and he's like no you don't understand you've got to show us your paperwork so he just fucking knocks the guy out <laughs> and then he, has, he has a nap and they come back and they're like whoa you know we're fucking gonna find out about you and a couple of days later the guy's knocked out they offer him his job so he ends up running the building at first i was a bit fucking scary because i thought i was gonna get stabbed up you know what i mean but i didn't know what he was asking i don't know what the fuck he wanted to know my paperwork for i'd been on the coach all bastard day i just wanted to get and have a sleep, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> 40 winks later, that. Yeah. <laughs> Get me head on the bunk. So you're a big name, and what I saw was people with big names, people test them and try them in prison to try and make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Did anything like that happen during your incarceration? Not really, no. Not really, you know. I do have incidents, you know. Yeah. But I'm not a one-man band. I've got friends, associates, as everybody else, you know. If you hurt one person, you've got a group of people who and put it back in half. If you've got friends, that's what friends do. Look after each other. Yeah. Is there any of those incidents you can tell us the story of? Not unless I want to go to prison myself. <laughs> 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 Statute of limitations and all that yeah, shit. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll just stick it there. We'll just leave that one and that one, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> in Atkinson, it was easy to get back at someone because your fucking door was open all the time apart from count. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. I can say anyone could just have you any time. Up get to like 10 o'clock or something like that. Well, yeah, it was just open. Yeah. I was in prison when I was done my 10 year sentence. I had um, a week left in my prison sentence, you know. We had two weeks left, and uh, a man rolled over my brother. My brother, I'd get out of prison, and there um, was a man. The prosecution alleged that the man was something to do with his, my brother's wife, you know. Anyway, somebody shot the man in the head. Naturally, he died. <laughs> uh, and a friend of mine ended up on the gear, and the police were feeding him heroin to go and make allegations against me, you know. And whilst I was in prison, the allegations were that they say, um, I got arrested and I was on remand at the time for <sighs> the amount of money my menaces blackmailed basically, you know. Going to hurry up, you've got to pull up, you know, you've got to pay or, or else. So I'm on remand, I got a, got a 10-year sentence for that and um, you will do. When I got arrested for certain murders and it was, this year's the man, the man was a bisexual and his boyfriend was a police sergeant. And somebody shot his leg off, you know, when I was on the mound. What the hell? And I was in the jail, but they blamed me for it, you know. And they yeah. Burnt, and they've been the crowd prosecution service now. And it's easy for the police informers to say it's one of the CS, it's one of the CS. I was in jail at the time, you know. Yeah. They kind of get a big bit of alibi, you know. But these are the sort of things. It's not what I've been arrested for. It's the caliber of the lure life who's had what arrested, what should be looked at, you know. And they said, I got asked one day what I've been arrested for, and I had to mention murder. And I felt, do you know what? I felt so ashamed by seeing it. I did it for some reason. I felt ashamed by saying it. Enough. This is what these degenerates have done to me, you know? By saying the bisexual suit is stitching you up because it's a hate crime and you get more time, don't you? What's always what? When you say, like, the bisexual bit, like you said then, it's classed as a hate crime. Bisexual? And, yeah. What's bisexual? You, the story you were just telling us about Oh, that one, I, I thought you were missing... Not like But was he coming from there? I was, I. I that's, what, that's what they say, you know. Mm. I didn't know I was on remand at the time. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I was in jail. I was in Durham jail. So, uh, after a short while, me, uh, me, me and my two brothers, John was doing 15 years for a security van, dep security van and a uh, depot robbery. Me and Michael would got convicted, Michael got a 12 year at trial for the blackmail, I received a 10 on a guilty. Between the three we're doing 37 year imprisonment, you know. When the Irish went back, there was only so many double category years left, there was 10 in the country, me and Michael were both category, double category year prisoners. John was triple category year, he was in, he was in White Moor unit. So I didn't even know they had double category A and triple category uh, A. There was only three triple category year, John was one of them, out of the 60 pounds of So for the Americans, let me, just, let me just go over this. So in America you got minimum, medium, Max, super max. Mm. So in the UK, category A is equivalent to super max, is it? Ma max, max, then super, super max, max with double category. Yeah. But as I say, you've got triple category, which is a, a unit, a, a prison within, say, the prison, you know? So you're like elite super max. Like Belmarsh. 
Well, Mosh, well, I've just had my brother down there. My brother's been arrested for a crime in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Both of the two were got arrested. What basically happened, my, ch my son and uh, my nephew and my other two sons went basically to the nightclub and some doorman attacked them. My son's an ex-boxer, ex-Royal Marine. Did you know what the fuck, did you know the surname, like? Yeah, uh, the chef, you know, <laughs> I found it off my son, you know. Yeah. He was a bodybuilder. He wanted to say, not a straight on me boy, you know, my boy punched the fuck out of him. Yeah. Well, they, they, they had done that door for different parts of the country, and um, then went back to the kids and they, they attacked the Benz. Yeah, you know, they're only kids, you know. Yeah. They had not only attacked them, but they had done this, uh, lifted the hands to a lot of different people, you know. One of the geezers on the door was New Zealand Special Forces, or something, you know, and it was the thought he was so special. Anyway, he, he ran away after the one, one of them got shot. You know, I'm not surprised because of the activity, you know, which way they went on, you know, bashing people up regular. And they didn't like that. <laughs> Uh, that stopped the bullying off them. My brother got nicked. I got nicked. My brother went on remand. They put him down Belmarsh and put him up in the Old Bailey. And the evidence against him was circumstantial evidence. Mm. And they were wanting to give him a life sentence on circumstantial evidence. You know. So that's what we're up against, you know. So when you were in the double cat and the triple cat, what, what is it like? How is it structured in that building? Well, I went. <clears throat> I started off. I spent fifteen months in the segregation unit. Yeah. And one sitting, I listen to these young and these young drug dealers, not and they complain about they spend a few time in the jail. I had fifteen months in the seg, being one shot man. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know if that's the case, lads, it's kind of do the kind of do the time you shouldn't do the crime, you know. Do you think fifteen months a life sentence? <laughs> <laughs> right in the seg, yeah. fifteen months in the seg, yeah. with windows in the winter. <laughs> They've got a tendency to put, to turn the heating off in the winter. I've done more than 15 months on the fucking toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what was it like then in, in the cat, uh, double cat and the triple cat? Um, well, I got moved from when I came out the segregation unit and went down to Whitemore. I was down Whitemore for a while. You can cook in them places, you know. Me, me, two, but me, but me, Michael arrived and John arrived. <coughs> uh, the three we went for a walk. And it was the first time in like 20 years, some of the three brothers, I went for a walk, because one was in prison, they were the other one. And it was a strange feeling, you know, my mum came on the visit, I've seen the three and the first thing she done was burst out crying. Mm. It was the first time I've seen a boys together, you know, for, mm. a lot, for a long time. Dad. No, you say you can cook. What are you using a microwave, or like, do you get like a, like a Calagas ring or something? In prison, in prison you had, um, you did have microwaves in there. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> <coughs> It was on a Chinese flu. <laughs> <laughs> you had you could cook on the on the, the on the wings, you know. You could cook in the like say they had a like say three kitchens or something like that, per, yeah. per wing. So if you could just buy your stuff and just kind of you got on the food boat, you know. So yeah. cool. I learned to cook in the place, you know. It was, I couldn't make cornflakes when I went in. But and you, in the end, I was cooking for like twenty or so of people. But you keep your food in your you own know, cell. You don't put it in a, like a fridge community. Ah, it's a communal fridge, you know, and everybody knows how so, you know, obviously you're going to get people stealing it. It's a, a big house full of thieves. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get people out stealing, you know, but they take your coat now and then, you know. They'll get smashed with that, though, won't they? Yeah, they'll get striped up, you know. People will do that, they don't like it, you know. Yeah. I'd hate that if someone took my Chinese. I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> 26 fucking stone. Leave my Chinese alone. <laughs> 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 so um, I did some time in Max and Supermax in Arizona and the guards have got all this shank proof body armor they look like Darth Vader masks and all that shit stab proof is that is that what it's like in a double A cat I suppose when I was in the in the unit I was next to a man called uh, Bob Mosley he's called like the British Hannibal Lecter I think he's a scout lad British Hannibal Lecter ah, he's what the one who he, he killed he the man's do? head in the, and he, that's the one that story when he killed three in the jail and he killed one in the nut house. I told him the jail and one in the nut house and he ate the man's brains. Have you heard of this one? Bob Moore's, he's still in. Uh, no, I haven't heard of that. Not, not the one eating the brains. Well, no. I see yeah. brother. He was next door to me, me brother. And like, see, me, I was there. Um, he was in the middle of Michael's on the other side. I said, he was double category as well. And I said to me, brother, Michael, I said, I don't know anybody on this planet who's got a worse life than him. He went, he's got a telly for you, haven't one? I thought about it. I thought, you're fucking right. Yes, you're right. But life goes on, you know. Life goes on. <coughs> <coughs> Oops. So, uh, yeah, I do, uh, looking back at it, you know, it was a bit harsher sentence what they were. Yeah. It wasn't within the guidelines. You make your bed, you line it. Yeah. You kind of complain, you know. So did you go through a period of resenting that, but then accepting it? No, I accepted nothing. Like, I just got it good on board. Not yeah. saying, like, say, as I say, the guidelines for the crime, like, say, total four, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've received a 10. 
Yeah. We've got no, like, so we've at least as a category of prisoner as well, no rehabilitation whatsoever, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have decent barristers, like? Yeah, yeah. I, I originally had Michael Mansfield at the beginning, but uh, I lost him, you know. But um, I put a QC, so it wasn't some Mickey Mouse thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just, just with the, the family name, the guidelines go up the window, you know. Like, you hear some mm. people who say, oh, I've got all these years and all that, and yet they have the public pretend, you know what I mean, a non paid attorney. And basically, you get what you pay for, don't you? Yeah, do, but yes, there's still guidelines. It's, you know, they've got guy, they're going to get me for shoplifting. You get if they months. say no less than that and no more than that, they should stick with that. They couldn't yeah. go over it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't, they, do, they, never, they never do with us, you know. That's just your name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's not because we're the worst, anyway. That's just because we won't. No, 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 no. We won't bother enough from your place. We won't give them any money or any information. And they don't yeah. like it, you know. They've got, like, I would say, enough from your place is one of the most cool police forces in the, in the country, you know. Um, What's the biggest gang, isn't it? They well, can't... of course, they've got a name for them. What were they calling them? PGs, police gangsters? Police yeah. gangsters. Ah, yeah, because what happened is they say, see they'll raid a house, a drug dealer's house. Yeah. Get 20 grand and a kilo of Charlie, kilo of cocaine, you know. They could have got the court, they find he's up the court for two grand. And films of the cocaine. Who's going to complain? I should be doing the 12, not the two. And that's how they get them, you know. It's, 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 I hear yeah, them on the street. I hear these conversations. So I know what they get up to, you know. You see them in the flash wine bars in Newcastle. But what's the money on that? Drug dealers and criminals. And footballers have what's the money. But police officers, well, what's the money? There's buying 50 pounds wrong. You know? It doesn't happen. No. Yeah. It doesn't happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we've had quite a few cops on here. Ex-cops and stuff like that. And, um... The police have been policed, aren't they, though? There's always people watching them because they're fucking corrupt. Yeah, yeah. One one guy we had on here, Neil Woods, he was an undercover cop. He quit because he was assigned an undercover partner one day and he had a bad feeling about him. The drug gangs had paid that guy to go and get hired by the police. I know. Yeah, that's how fucking crazy it's got now mm -hmm. in, the, in the cops. Yeah, it's happened so happens, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what did you do with yourself then, just like day by day? What was your routine in prison? Well, I spent a lot, like say, I was double category here, so I wasn't allowed to work. I was mostly behind the door, you know, and if you worked, you had to work on the wing. Yeah. Eventually got a cleaning job on the wing after a while. Uh, so what is the cleaning job? What does that entail? Pushing it around it. <laughs> Not the showers or anything? No. People showering. There was different, but people had a job for that. They give it, give it, they said, no, I can't hear, had that job, you know, I'd probably clean the land, somebody had the one, had the two, somebody had the one, somebody would clean the television yeah. room, somebody would clean the shower room, yeah. somebody would clean the kitchen, you know. It was just to try and get the lads who were, like, a category here, a job, basically. You'd have right. people at the door saying, yeah, come here, come here, come here, go you know, past cakes and stuff like and that. Yeah, it happens, but yeah. I'm a little bit above that person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let screws do that for them. Yeah. <laughs> when you wasn't working, how did you fill your time? Uh, well, so TVs came in, didn't they? TVs came in. Paul Channel. Was, uh, we'll discuss that later, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, you didn't get no later on them. But um, the TVs came in, and I would train all the time. I was training twice a day. Mm. So I was very fit, the best condition I've been in my life, you know. I was doing a bit of mixed martial arts, boxing, and, and circuit training. So. Could you get white weights in the high security, whatever you weapon? Yeah, so you got loaded to go to the gym, you know, at certain times. Actually, you got more gym of being a high security prisoner. Yeah. So that's one thing you could get. You could get like gym maybe 10, 12 times a week. So uh, that was good enough for me, you know. Which exercises did you prefer to do? I was doing, for example, power, power clean, circuit training, boxing, mixed martial arts. Yeah. So you could do like sparring in there with people or? Not supposed to, you know. You can, you can have unlicensed sparring. If you're some fellow with somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happened quite often. They're different people, you know, not necessarily myself. Yeah. Well, you use his gloves, shower shoes. They could get pads sent in, boxing gloves. All oh, right. So he had the pads and all that, you know. So it's, it's handy, I suppose, in them places. But the schools could see people were getting better and dangerous. Yeah. And see, in the America, bit... they'd use that. No, you shower shoes and drop the shower shoes uh, around, and put a bandage around mm -hmm. it. I went to Dunkerstown, and they've actually, on the wing, they've got a punch bag on the wing. Every wing's got a punch bag, you know. Yeah. Be like to say it's empty, wouldn't it? I think it would, but they do like it when the people like it over a long course of time, they come very dangerous. Yeah. They're not allowed to take the schools are fighting kids to get attacked. So, uh, well, they're getting, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I always laugh at them people that get that big, but they forget to do the fucking legs. They're, the fucking, they're like that chisel ah, chest, and they've got like little pigeon fucking legs, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was in, um, I can remember one day I was in, I was in Franklin Prison. And I was with the doctors, and like to be in a category, a category of year, high risk. You had the permission to go through every fence. Yeah. So as we're going through the fence, the bell goes off, and the nuns part of the bottom, the bottom wings, you know. So we've got we're frozen. We can't move anywhere. 
and all of them were coming out the gym. So it was about 50 of them coming out the gym. And I'll be honest, I've never felt frightened in the jails, but it was the first time I felt concerned. And uh, I was at, like, I would have been a, like a, a perfect scalp for that, all the sex case, because they get a lot of stick, you know, was, and, right, and rightly so. And rightly so. And when I was going to his high risk, they were showing some biggins as well. You know, I don't think these are little, skimpy little old men, you know, six foot six laddies that have fucking chest on them like that. And you can look, and uh, people would have problems with them. And they were shouting, get them for you, I will rape them, get them for you. And the school system, he says, whatever you do, don't attack them. I says, the first person I'll be attacking is you for the keys, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Don't attack you. <laughs> no, I don't attack them. I felt very concerned. You know, they stand with dumbbells, get them for you, I will fucking rape them. <laughs> that's, that's something, you know, I don't mind that a bit of that, but that's a bit... Sick <laughs> bastards would do it as well, wouldn't they? Well, of course they would. Of course they would. Yeah. Yeah. That, that video that fucking revolted you that we watched what was it where the guy was um, he was collecting debts and he ended up getting raped or something oh yeah it's fucking hell the old money so he ended up getting someone to bomb him that's not fucking right is it no it's not well we'll move on <laughs> move on <laughs>